Guys, are you struggling to find a top tier PvP build for your Magicka Sorcerer? Are you convinced that the Magicka Sorcerer is one of the worst classes for solo content PvP in the Elder Scrolls Online? Well, I'm here to tell you that is simply not the case. You just need the correct build. And trust me, guys, you don't want to miss this. Before we hop into the build as well as the gameplay, this video is sponsored by... <sighs> you got me, I don't have a sponsor. Um, but seriously, this build would not have been possible if it was not for iTarget. He saw me struggling on a few of my streams trying to make the Magicka Sorcerer great again. He is one of the best Magicka Sorcerers on the Xbox, so most of this build is actually a credit to him. So I have his channel description down in the, uh, the towel section, so go check him out and give him some love. He's a really awesome, chill dude. Okay, so let's start by going over the character sheet because there are a few things I want to explain before we hop into the gameplay itself and you guys just go on autopilot, okay? So when it comes to our recoveries, you do want very high recoveries on the build because you are going to have to play with your sustain very, very heavily. So with the Tri Potion active, we got around 2100 mag recovery, 1600 stam recovery. You may notice our stats are constantly changing because that is due to our mythic item, Death Dealer's Fate. On this build in particular, you do get up to around 52k maximum magicka, which equates to a 13.5 thousand hardened ward, which is super beefy. And then our resistances are equally as tanky. It's actually uh, pretty phenomenal. So we have around 28k spell and physical resist to 26k, which is perfect for the magicka sorcerer in my opinion. We have all of our stat points into maximum magicka. We are a dark elf on this build arguably you will want to go breton but since i flip flop back and forth between stam sorg and mag sorg i just went with dark elf because it's the best of both worlds and it also does give you resistances to those pesky dragon eyes which plague cyrodiil when it comes to the food you'll be rocking be with sugar skulls when it comes to the mundus you can either slot the mage for more max and magic with a little bit bigger damage shield or you can go with the lover if you go with a lover, it does increase your overall damage output by about 3-4%. to We are a Vampire Stage 3. It is an absolutely necessary evil that most PvP builds just have to have. Alright, so let's hop into what sets we're running. So on our front bar, we are running Crafty Alphix Lightning Staff. The reason we are running a Lightning Staff is due to the Update 39 changes where they flip-flop the inferno staff passives with the lightning staff passives now if you want to do direct damage more direct damage you have to run a lightning staff i really don't like the way it looks how you hold it but uh, it is what it is guys we are running a berserker enchantment on this alternatively you could run a stamina enchant as well you know it does the stamina damage because it has a pretty high chance to apply minor breach to your opponent it's entirely up to you I went with a Berserker enchantment because it just buffs all of our damage all the time. We have a sharpened trait on the staff itself and if you're unfamiliar with what Crafty does, it just gives you a lot of maximum magicka and is very very important on this build. Back to bar, we are running Ice Staff of Wretched Vitality Defending. We are running the Escapist Poisons. These are very useful in open world with the immobilization effect as well as the unstoppable buff that is applied to you. One really fun niche thing you can do with these poisons, if someone is trying to run away from you on their mount, you can actually root their mount with these poisons. Pretty funny. Wretched Vitality is going to give us recoveries, recoveries, weapon and spell damage, and then while you're in combat, while you apply a major debuff or a minor debuff or a major buff or a minor buff, you will get a metric crap load of stamina and magic recovery, which is absolutely necessary on this build. The next set we are running is Mighty Chudan. So when it comes to the armor weights, I'm running two heavy, one medium, and four light. We are running maximum magicka on literally every single piece of gear that we have. Chudans, if you're unfamiliar, it gives you armor, gives you health, and it also gives you major resolve. This means you don't have to run lightning form on the build. When it comes to the accessories, we are running a Crafty Alphix Amulet Arcane with a weapon and spell damage glyph. Our mythic item of choice on this build is going to be Death Dealer's Fate. This is going to give you amalgamation of stats. And without getting into the nitty gritty and all the math uh, when it comes to this mythic, essentially the more maximum magicka you have, the better this actually scales. You actually get more bang for your buck the higher maximum magicka is. Death Dealer's Fate, simply put, gives you extra maximum magicka, health, as well as stamina every two seconds, and this can persist all the way up to 30 seconds, which equates to one minute. So there's really no downside to this mythic. 
when it comes to the trade is arcane we do have a mag recovery glyph on this and then and then the last piece of jewelry we have is crafty outfigs arcane mag recovery okay so i'm actually going to start the skills on the back bar because there's one skill in particular which has opened up a huge variety for the magic sorcerer so let's talk about bound ages so there was a very subtle change to this ability but it made a huge impact on the class no one cares about the beginning paragraph what is the juicy portion of this ability is while slotted on either ability bar your maximum magic is increased by eight percent and you gain minor resolve and minor protection which is absolutely huge on the class. You no longer have to run this on your front bar to increase your maximum magicka. And because Bound Aegis is always active, you get to take advantage of Expert Summoner, which increases your maximum health also by 8% while you have a Daedric Summoning ability active. Shuffling back to the first ability on the bar is Dark Conversion. This is your, your pseudo heal. It's also going to restore your magicka as well as an additional 3000 magicka over 20 seconds and is also going to give you minor berserk for the 20 seconds next ability is haunting curse this has been a staple on the magzor kit since literally a millennia okay so he has got some changes uh, over the years so it does tick twice now once after 3.5 seconds and then it will also tick again after 8.5 seconds if you want my opinion if you want to buff the magic of sorcerer i think the second tick needs to do more damage next ability is elemental susceptibility this is going to allow us to keep debuffs and pressure on our opponent inflicting them with burning concuss and the chilled stats effect every seven and a half seconds and is also going to inflict them with major breach reducing the resistances by around six thousand next ability is critical surge you absolutely have to have critical surge because this is going to be your main source of healing assuming you can keep your wards up your wards are very very important on this build if you let your wards drop you're going to get smushed. It's very, very hard to recover since you do not have a burst heal. Our ultimate on the back bar is energy overload. Every single time you attack with this, you're going to restore 1000 magicka as well as 1000 stamina. Some things to note, you cannot generate ultimate while in overload form. Very similar to the avatar. Okay, so do not forget to untoggle this when you're not using it. And another pro tip for you guys, if you want to untoggle your overload, you do not have to swap to your back bar, untoggle then swap back to your front bar, which is essentially wasting two global cooldowns, which is two seconds over your time. You can just simply animation cancel Dawnbreaker and it will untoggle overload for you. Speaking of Dawnbreaker, let's get to our front bar. So we are running Crystal Frag, surprise, surprise, We're running Harden Ward on the front bar, guys. You have to run Harden Ward on your front bar. This is the best way to play Magicka Sorcerer because you're going to stack into maximum Magicka. The best offense is a really great defense. And that is the philosophy to this build. So we are stacking a metric crap load of maximum Magicka on our front bar. So the Harden Ward needs to go to the front bar as well because it is only scaling off your maximum Magicka now you could argue to run a health build and guys i'm here to tell you right now i tried running the health build and you just do nothing for damage next is inner light this is going to give us crit this is going to expose those pesky night blazing is also going to further increase our maximum magic of by five percent next is crushing shock now i am a crushing shock enjoyer if you want to run crushing weapons that is your prerogative but I'm here to tell you Crushing Shock just performs so much better than Crushing Weapons, okay? That, especially if you are on controller like myself, it is notoriously hard to land your full combo if you are not on mouse and keyboard. So please, if you are a controller enjoyer, run Crushing Shock, you can thank me later. Last ability on the bar is Streak. This is our undodgeable, unblockable CC, as well as our gap closer, as well as our get the hell out button. Hopping over into the champion points, you do have a lot of play here. You can change things however you want. So what I have chosen to go with is Mastered Arms, Weapons Expert. This is going to increase your light and heavy attack by 20%. This buffs Overload, even though it does not buff the tooltip. Don't be fooled. Deadly Aim and Ironclad. You could potentially change these around. If you feel like you have enough damage, you could go with Cleansing Revival, which is still bugged. Zoss, fix your game! But essentially, Cleansing Revival is going to help you deal with the meta proc tar build, Masters, Batrans, Marcelix, you know, all that cheese. Red Tree, I'm running Bastion, Survival Instincts. This is really going to help with your stamina sustain. And we're also running Arcane Alacrity. So while you have a status effect on you and you also have a ward active, which you should pretty much have at all times, your roll dodges cost next to nothing. I can literally roll 
13 times in a row before I had to pop a potion assuming I have a word active and a status effect on me before I run out of stamina. These two in conjunction makes a roly poly sorcerer very very effective in open world and since we are not running a defensive set it's pretty important to have amazing stamina sustain. Last but not least we're running Pain's Refuge which is going to give you a metric crap load of damage mitigation per negative effect on you and if you're not running the purge well you're going to have like pretty much 20% all the time. Thanks for watching until the end guys that was an absolute mouthful and that's what she said i know i know uh, don't forget to like and sub if you found any information in this video at all helpful also offer one-on-one -on -one pvp coaching if you want to help support the channel i have all of this stuff down in the description in the uh in the towel section below a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons as well as my community members you guys are absolutely amazing guys also also i knew even though i said guys like you know eight times now in this video guys Go follow me on Twitch. I do dual stream on both YouTube and Twitch. I usually do a four to five times a week. If you want to be live in person, just kind of chat with me, pick my brain a little bit. It's all fun. We have a really good time. With all that being said, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your evening and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.